Hello again. In this video, uh, I'm going to try and show you how to make a very simple uh, LED hand torch. Um, the whole thing comes out at just about just over a pound in, uh, for, for the materials. Um, in an earlier video, I showed you how to make um, a torch with a uh, bulb. Um, these filament bulbs have been around now for over a hundred years. They've served us well. But as I'm sure you've spotted, they've been largely being replaced by um, low energy uh, bulbs like this or um, LED bulbs. Um, torches now, it's quite hard to find a torch that's got a bulb in it. They, they nearly always have um, LED. This is a torch that you don't even need batteries. You, just, uh, you can wind it. It has a dynamo inside. So um, I thought it was about time that I got into the 21st century. So let me show you how to make this very simple LED torch. You don't need uh, a lot of parts for this. We've got uh, two AA batteries. Just ordinary AA batteries are fine. Um, a twin AA battery holder. Uh, a battery holder connector. And I've um, stripped the ends here back to about a centimetre. Um, a white LED. Uh, make sure that when you're buying LEDs that the voltage is uh, uh, suitable. If you put too many volts through an LED uh, it will actually get hot and I have actually seen them uh, go pop. Um, red, yellow and green LEDs uh, are still just a few pence each. Um, white LEDs are a little bit more expensive. This particular one is um, uh, current price is 40p and is available from my technology shop. Its code number is E205. Uh, what else do you need? You need um, four paper fasteners, sometimes called split pins in schools. These are the short-legged ones at 13mm leg. You need four of those. And you need um, a piece of Corex, my favourite plastic material, sometimes called Corex flute. This is the 3mm thick Corex. And this strip is about 24 centimetres long by 4 centimetres wide. Um, I've chosen a uh, translucent so that you can actually see the wires as I, as I make the torch. You could obviously use any colour that, that, that you like. It's important that when you cut the strip that you have the, the, the flutes, the holes, running lengthwise. Okay, so make sure you have the flutes running um, lengthwise along the strip. So here's how to make the torch. The first thing we're going to do is to cut just um, a two centimetre piece off the end of the strip before we do anything else. I'm going to use um, a craft knife to do this because sometimes when you use scissors or card cutting scissors it will squash the holes and, and we need to be able to get into the holes. So whenever we use craft knives in schools uh, we always use safety ruler and a cutting mat. So I'm just going to cut a two centimetre piece off. go and we're going to save this piece um, for later. So now hopefully we've got a piece 22 centimetres long and I'm going to find halfway which according to my maths will be at 11 centimetres and I'm going to score a line here. I'm not going to cut through I'm just going to cut kind of halfway through just cut the surface being very careful not to cut all the way through and that will allow the Corex to be hinged really nicely. It's one of the reasons I like this material, it, it hinges so well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to make um, four holes, two holes on one side, two holes in the other. Now, um, to do this, I am going to use uh, a special tool. I don't like using special tools in primary schools because they tend not to have them. Um, this is a hole punch. Um, this is a rather nice one. Uh, this is a more common hole punch you see in schools. Um, unfortunately the hole it makes is a little bit big. It's just about okay for these paper fasteners. Uh, you may need to try and find some paper fasteners with a larger head. They, 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 they do exist. This one makes a slightly smaller hole which is perfect. So I'm going to make the holes about, two, uh, about a centimetre down from the end and about a centimetre and a half apart. Don't make them closer together than that otherwise the hedge will touch and you'll have a short circuit. 
So I don't know if you can see those two holes there. I'm then going to close the, the strip. We're actually going to make um, a switch out of the strip. And I'm just going to use a pencil to make two marks so that I can make the other two holes and be sure that they absolutely line up. I'm just going to poke out the pieces of plastic from the hole punch so I can see through to guide it onto the mark. There we go, just poke that one out and make the final hole and then hopefully now those holes should, when I close the switch, they should line up perfectly and they do. Next thing we're going to do is to connect the paper uh, the battery holder wires to two paper fasteners. Now these battery holder wires are actually multi-strand so I'm just going to twist all the strands together to stop them from getting in a knot. And I'm going to choose one of the wires, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to go into the back where the hinge is and choose one of the flutes or holes that will take the wire up to the hole at the other end. And I don't know if you can see, can you see that the, I've been very lucky, the wire has actually come out through the hole. Can you see that? Okay, I'm now going to get a paper fastener, open up the legs a little bit, and then put the paper fastener through the hole, but make sure that you put the head on the inside of the switch. So can we have the, the paper fastener that way round? And I'm going to try and get the two legs of the paper fastener to go either side of the wire, the bare end of the wire, and twist it round and then bend the legs over as tight as you can. So we've made a, a, really, good, a really good connection there. Repeat for the other wire. Again, aim for a hole that goes up to the punched hole. There we are. I don't know if you can see the wire. Again, I've been very lucky. Oh, it's come out this side this time. That's okay. Can you see the wires coming out? And I'll get the other paper faster. Once again, make sure the head of the paper fastener is on the inside, like this. This time I'm going to bend the wire around underneath the head of the paper fastener. And once again, bend the legs over. When you bend the second paper fastener legs over, make sure that they don't touch the first one. So make sure, otherwise that would be a short circuit. And to make it even more reliable, I'm going to cover the legs with a piece of sticky tape. There we go. So that's the paper fastener, uh, the uh, battery holder leg uh, wires connected to the two paper fasteners. Okay. We're now going to connect the LED at the other side to two more paper fasteners. Now we could just push the LED wires straight down, but that means that anyone will be able to uh, remove the LED at any time. So to make it a little bit more secure, I'm going to bend hooks into the ends of the wire. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. Um, I've yet to try this with a, with a class in a primary school. I'm hoping to trial it soon with my after school D&T club, which this term are uh, year six. I'm sure they'll be able to do it. Uh, so can you see I've made two hooks there? Perhaps, perhaps I'll need to give them a pair of pliers to help them do that. Now, because I've done that, I've now lost track of which is the long leg and which is the short leg. So to find out, let's um, connect our battery up. Make sure we put the batteries in the right way. To connect up the battery holder with its batteries. And connect it to the uh, connector. And there we go. And rather than having it dangle, uh, we may as well glue it in place now. We could glue it um, there or it could be glued there, it makes no difference. We could use um, sticky pads to stick it on. Um, I've got a glue gun here, so we might as well use that. So put some glue on the battery holder. And we stick it down. There we are. So now, these two paper fasteners are live, and we can use them to find out which way round the LED should go. Let's see, uh, uh, no it doesn't work that way so let's turn it round 
and try the other way. Uh, yes, there we are. So that's the way round the LED should be. So that means it's got to go in that way here. So have you got that? So whatever you do before you put your LED in and connect it up, make sure it's the right way round. So let's push these legs down through a slot that's going to take it to the hole. There we are, that's worked out really well. Can you see the, the wires and the hooks there? And that's ready for the last two paper fasteners. Once again, make sure the heads are on the inside of the switch and try and aim the paper fastener legs to go either side of the hook. Bend over as tight as you can. And now the LED is actually trapped and it can't be pulled out. And then the last paper fastener, again, try and get one of the paper fastener legs to go in the middle of the hook and then bend those legs over and once again as before make sure that the two legs of the paper fastener uh, don't touch each other. And again we're going to cover that with tape to make it super reliable. There we go. Now let's see if uh, all's well, see if the torch is working. Yes it is, it's working. Um, finally we're actually going to do you remember the piece that we cut off earlier? I'm just going to glue that there, near the bottom of the hinge. And then I'm going to put some glue on there and then glue the top onto it. So that we've got um, a, a switch that automatically opens to save the batteries. I'm just going to put some glue on that piece of Corex. Glue it about there. And then put some glue on top of there. So we've made a, a, a springy switch. Because it is under tension I'm just going to hold it uh, for a few seconds to give the glue a chance to dry. There we go. And that is our finished uh, switch. Obviously if you can afford it you could have more than one LED there or perhaps use um, a different colour LED. Well, um, that's not quite everything. Just before I finish um, Here's a bit of a mystery for you. I wonder what's going on with this bulb. Perhaps I've solved the world's energy crisis. Um, the mystery will be revealed in my next video. Thanks for watching.